What's up everybody, it's Carl, aka Carl Trump Tech, and today let's talk about which style is better. East Coast style or West Coast style? You pick or I pick. Here we go. Cue the music. All right, if you guys are finding me for the first time, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the red button down below that says subscribe. That way you are notified anytime I put out a new video related to the marching arts, marching bands, drum corps, indoor percussion, all that good stuff. And hit that notification bell as well. That way you are the first to find out when I put out a new upload so you don't miss a single thing. All right, so subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get to the video. So I had somebody ask me, hey Carl, what's the difference between the West Coast style of drumming and the East Coast side of drumming. So um, let me give you my limited knowledge on the subject. It's a very old school, you know, kind of like a, you know, background on this and my perspective on it is probably a little bit outdated. Maybe there's, you know, a different, um, you know, differentiator nowadays. So I can't tell you that from that perspective, but I can tell you from my perspective. And my perspective is, like I said, it's the old school way, all right? so. What I see as West Coast style versus East Coast style is this. Okay, West Coast style is the style I was exposed to, okay, which is, you know, you would say like it's like the Blue Devil, Tom Float kind of style, uh, Vanguard, all that good stuff. And uh, then you have the East Coast st style, right? So you have, you know, cadet style of drumming, Cavaliers, things like that, right? So um, what is the difference? In my opinion, the difference is, you know, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people can correct me if I'm wrong, all right? So um, in my opinion, I think the West Coast style is a, a little bit more free flowing. It's uh, definitely, you know, that is like big heights, big accents. Um, you know, the music just kind of just, just it grooves, it flows. It's like, you know, and so it's like the style kind of, you know, um, goes with that, right? So it's like, you know, like Blue Devils, like, you know, they had some very slow tempos. It was jazzy. It was just, you know, grooving in the pocket kind of stuff. And it, and it was big notes, you know, that, that, fl that, that was flowing, lots of, you know, rudiments, you know, flying at you. So that is how I define West Coast style, style drumming because that's what I learned. That's what I was exposed to, okay? Like that Tom Float kind of style. Like my teachers were taught by Tom Float, okay? So that is what, that's where I'm coming from. And that's the style that you see when you watch my videos, okay? So my perspective of East Coast si style, side of drumming, the East Coast style of drumming is kind of like a little bit more like, you know, maybe faster tempos. Uh, I don't want to say it's rigid, but it's very like a lot more defined than the West Coast style of drumming, especially with heights, right? It's height separations. Um, you know, it's like not as big, right? In terms of like, you know, like free flowing or like, you know, big accents and things like that. It's just like straight line, like, you know, uh, in your face, like fast. And, you know, and that's the style that I see when I watch, you know, like Cavaliers or Cadets, you know, back in those days. So when I say back in those days, you know, like, you know, I watched old videos, you know, back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, and I was exposed to like, yeah, like I, when I watched drum corps, it was like, you know, like 90s. And it's like, I still kind of saw those differentiators, right? At the end of the day, like these styles kind of, you know, also flip flop the blue coast, right? It's in Ohio, it's East Coast, but guess who's teaching over there? Roger Carter, Roger Carter, March Blue Devils. Mar Roger Carter is quote unquote West Coast, right? So at the end of the day, like, you know, my perspective is that there's all these mixing of styles, right? There's people who are, you know, going to the East Coast and teaching their West Coast style, East Coast people coming to the West Coast teaching their West Coast style. So it's like, you know, there's, it's kind of, it starts to be homogenous, but then, you know, I guess there's still that like, there's a distinction, West Coast style versus East Coast style. So what is better? What would I pick? Even though I was exposed to West Coast style, what would I pick, right? What is the best style? And you know, like if you wanna like talk about, you know, West versus East, I mean, my good friend, William Van Pan, right? He marched Cavaliers, he is East Coast, right? So his style is kind of East Coast style, right? You could say that. So coming, coming from that perspective, right? And, and we drum together, right? We can play some stuff together and all that stuff. What's better? Who has the better style, right? Is it the West Coast style or is it the East Coast style? Fucking doesn't matter. Like it really doesn't. Like who gives a shit, right? Like whatever style works for you, whatever style works for the core, that is the style you go with, okay? And whatever you're taught, like you go with that, right? I mean, hopefully you're gonna be open enough to like learn from different influences, different styles, different approaches. But at the end of the day, like don't be so consumed by which, which style is better or like, you know, um, you know about, or just like thinking about styles in general. 
Who cares about that stuff, all right? So as an example, take the great Bruce Lee, okay? I love Bruce Lee because, you know, he learned a certain style of Kung Fu, right? And then like, as he grew more mature and he saw different stuff, like he's, he's like, well, what about these other disciplines? What about these other styles, these martial arts? Like, I like these too, right? So it's like, he incorporated some boxing. He incorporated some, like some nunchucks. So Bruce Lee invented this thing called Jeet Kune Do, right? which is his own unique style where he called it from different disciplines, different ideas, different styles, right? And, you know, mixed martial arts is born from those ideas of Bruce Lee, right? Which is like, you know, whatever martial arts technique or style works for you, do that, right? And hopefully you're not just like stuck within just one way of doing things that you can't like open your mind up to different ways, different approaches right of doing stuff to help make you better maybe you can pick up something from a certain style that you're not used to and you can incorporate it into your playing and make you better right in that case you know like for martial arts like you know taking diff taking different disciplines techniques and then creating a whole new hybrid art right that can be even more effective that can, that can be even more devastating right so that's important okay don't be so stuck on like one way okay and when you say stuck it's like you can't grow Right, because I, I think even like there's a Bruce Lee movie called uh, Birth the Dragon where like, you know, one of the quotes is like, you know, style is a prison. Technique is a trap. Style is a prison. Kung Fu is meant to liberate. And it really is. Like it confines you to a certain way. That's why you have people on the internet saying like, you know, you know, well, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Like, you know, like, uh, uh, like you know, blah, 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 blah. Right, because they're only consumed by the, the styles and the techniques that they were exposed to, okay? Like they only know that way. So ev to them, everything else is wrong, okay? But when you, like, and, and that's a very immature thing, right? When you're young, okay? Because you only are exposed to a certain amount of education, to a certain amount of, you know, ways of doing things. But as you get older, you see that there's other ways, other ways that also work. It can be different from your own, own way of doing things, but it works for them right maybe it doesn't work for you okay that's another thing okay so you don't you don't you don't want to say like you know well i tried it and it doesn't work so it's not valid it, it it doesn't mean it's not valid it means that maybe it doesn't work for you and that's okay right but somebody can be doing something completely different and it works for them and that's fine right so whatever works for you even in sports like there's different styles right there's the defensive style of playing there's the offensive style of playing and both styles have been successful right it's like whatever works for you do that if you can incorporate other styles and other techniques from different disciplines, do that. But don't be so caught up in what style is better. You know, there's, is, is there such thing as a West Coast style, an East Coast style? You know, like I said, it doesn't matter, okay? So don't focus on that. Focus on just getting better. That's the thing you need to focus on. And the other thing I was gonna say is like, you know, even if you have this mindset, right, that like, I wanna expand, I wanna learn other things. Like if you're in a drumline situation, like let's say you go try out for the Blue Devils, and then maybe like you were taught by a bunch of people from, you know, I don't know, the cadets, right? And you're like, well, you know, I, you know, we, we, should, we should do the cadet style because it's better, right? And you go to Blue Devils, right? And it's like, uh, no, you're gonna do our style, right? So if you wanna make that line, you better learn the, cadet, the, the Blue Devil style. Does that make sense, right? So if you're at your high school and you see this video and you're like, Carl says, you know, I should expand my, you know, horizons and, you know, like, so whatever you're teaching me is the East Coast style and I should learn more of the West Coast style, like, you know, I should do that. No, listen to what your instructor is saying and do what they're telling you to do because you need to learn something. You need to learn a, some type of form, some type of style because before you can break out of it, right? So let's go back to Bruce Lee, right? He learned a certain style of Kung Fu, right? When he was growing up, when he was a kid and from there he was able to expand, okay? But you can't, break the rules until you learn some rules to begin with. Does that make sense, right? It's like when I was learning how to drive, like I would learn different ways of like driving, like, you know, to hold the steering wheel. And then my dad's like, yo, first learn how to hold it correctly first, right? So <laughs> the hands on the wheel like this. And if you want to do this and you want to do this or whatever, right? It's like, that's fine. But learn the correct way first. Then if you want to break the rules or bend the rules, you can. Does that make sense, right? So it only makes sense that when you're at school, Okay, and your instructor is telling you, do it this way and only this way, do that. Do what your instructor tells you to do, okay? And then from there, you can expand as you go march independence or as you, you know, like just, you're, so, you're a solo drummer now. Now you wanna expand and learn different styles. Go do that. And like drum set playing is probably like 
the most diverse when it comes to styles, right? Because like everybody is like just on their own, okay? And you have all kinds of different techniques and styles and ways of doing things. It's all valid as long as it works for them. So it doesn't matter what's best. It doesn't matter if West Coast is better than East Coast or East Coast better than West Coast. None of that shit matters. What matters is find something that works for you, take from different, different disciplines and add it to your own to create your own unique style. And if you are learning in a school situation, if you're learning from a certain teacher, learn their style first. Okay, don't question, don't like, you know, like try to like sub, subvert like what they're trying to teach you. Go follow their path first, right? What they're trying to teach you, go with that. And if you want to expand later, go expand. Does that make sense? Okay, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you guys like this video, please make sure you hit that like button down below. If you have any questions or comments, leave that in the comments as well. If you feel like this video could help somebody else out, please make sure you share this video with them, share it on all your social media platforms. And like I said, if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, it's the red button down below. Do it right now, all right? Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It was a great uh, setting here today, uh, you know, with the, with the sky, like it was red, now it's like blue and red. It's pretty freaking cool, all right? So yeah, hopefully I, I, I can take you guys out of the element of marching percussion and just see the world around you, that it's a big world, that there's all kinds of different things going on. There's all kinds of different ideas, different styles, different approaches, different techniques. And I'll leave you with this, okay? Bruce Lee said, right be formless okay this is a guy who's like one of the best martial artists ever okay that, that many people consider is like one of the best ever all right his thing was like be formless be like water okay water when you pour it into a teacup right it forms it becomes into a teapot if you pour it into like a into a bowl it becomes the bowl right so be like water okay i said empty your mind be formless shapeless like water now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. So what he's trying to say too is like, whatever situ the situation calls for, like adapt, like become that thing, right? Don't be so stuck. Don't, don't be stuck in this prison of a certain style that you have to follow, right? Even Jeff Queen, okay, Jeff Queen, a right, legendary snare drummer, like, you know, he said, okay, like, you know, when you play, when you play a certain way, yeah, you have, you know, certain techniques that you, you try to do and execute, but as you go faster, you have to break out of this, those techniques in order to break the barrier of, there's a certain speed barrier, right, that you can't pass using the same technique that you're doing when you're doing slow. You have to change the technique, you have to change the approach in order to break it. Maybe sometimes you're gonna look sloppy, maybe it's gonna look crazy, but that's the only way you're gonna break that speed barrier is to go outside, right? Break the, <laughs> come out of the prison, right? Of just being stuck on the same approach, same technique, same style, right? Before we really tackle this subject, it's important to realize what it takes to get faster. So here's a great exercise to apply to, let's say, paradigms, okay? And what this concept is, is really one at a time. So short bursts of speed. You really want to learn what it feels like to play something as quick as you can uh, once. Okay, so it's again like a, a quick little little sort of, sort of eke it out, if you will. So I'm going to try to play one paradiddle as fast as I possibly can. And off the left. Okay, it's important to note that I'm not really worried about how it sounds right now because I'm trying to get faster. Certainly quality does matter, but not in this stage, okay? We'll start to add that later as you get more comfortable. So I'm gonna teach you an exercise uh, that's out of my book, The Next Level, and it's basically a four, two, one type of exercise. So it's basically a large chunk that we then cut in half, that we then cut in half, right about here. So it's gonna be a 30 second variable. So give the gada, give the gada, ready, and. play that literally as fast as I possibly can okay a couple things to note I'm not worried about how it sounds whatever I've done to this point has allowed me to sound as good as I can at whatever tempo I'm at okay so I'm not gonna worry about that I'm also not gonna worry about my technique too much in fact I'm gonna try to do different things so I can start to understand ways to get outside of my current comfort zone 
Okay? And I may find that some of those work, I may find that they don't, but that's really not the point. The point is to just really go and try to make it as fast as I possibly can. And I'll go, okay, what was I doing there? Oh, I did a little woogity thing here. Okay, cool. Let's maybe see what that is. Does that make sense to continue to do? So on and so forth. So this is really kind of a, uh, almost a free thinking sort of zone, but really just go for it is the bottom line. So here it is, as fast as I possibly can play that. Just try to play it really quick, okay? And did it sound good? Well, there was a couple that maybe sounded okay, but you know, when I really got going there at the end, it was it was a little questionable with the quality, okay? But that's again not what my focus was. My focus was to play it as fast as possible. So you can certainly apply that exercise to anything. You can learn to play short little bursts of singles. That type of thing. Rolls. Fun accents. Okay. And anything you could sort of throw into that little exercise to start to work again, short bursts of speed. So you have to try something different, okay, in order to achieve something that you've never achieved before. All right, and that's the message today, okay? All right, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys wanna watch more of my videos, please make sure you click over here, and to subscribe, subscribe over here. Peace out, catch you on the next video.